Okay, in this video, where we left off last time is when I clicked on a row, we now have made a row. The next thing I want to do is make a column and then do a cube. And I've already done those. Just one thing to uh, point out if I want to do a column and cube is you're going to use the mod function. And mod is going to tell us the leftover, and so that will help with the vertical. And so now when I run the program, I've got the row, uh, the column, and the cube selected. Great. Let's take a look at some other codes that we're going to need to work with here. And some of the other codes we're going to need to work with is uh, our answer. And I, uh, what I did is I created a global variable called um, Sudoku uh, answer. And it's going to be an array from 1 to 81. So each box uh, from 1 to 81 is going to have the correct number. And a Sudoku display, which also is going to be just what is displayed. And so let's take a look at how I use those global variables. I declare a variable called game, which is a string, and it's going to be uh, the first nine, uh, the second nine, the next nine, and so forth. And you'll see anywhere I put a zero, I'm going to use it to not display uh, what the game is. And for answer, what I do with that is the same thing, but these are all the first nine, the next nine, and so forth with the correct answers. So in our load game uh, subroutine here, what I'm going to do is as we go to load up the game, um, I'm going to take the tag, and remember we tagged each of the 81 cells so we knew which cell we're working with. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the Sudoku display is going to be the value of game's substring um, from 1 to 81. So as we're going through and we're um, going through our, our load up, I'm going to load up this string, which is just a string, and turn it into an array called the Sudoku Display um, Index, which is going to be from 1 to 81 with what is going to be displayed. Now, if it's a zero, if it's not a zero, we're going to display Sudoku Display. Otherwise, if it is a zero, we're just going to put nothing. Um, and I'm going to do the same thing with Sudoku answer. So I'm going to say Sudoku answer index um, is going to equal the value of the answer, which is my string right here. And I'm going to say I want the substring. And I want to know at index, so 1, then 2, then 3. Um, and I want to get uh, one character is how many characters I need to get for it. Okay, and so now it's going to load up Sudoku answer. Super. The next thing I'm going to do is as I put a number in, what I can do here is I'm going to need to build uh, some number buttons. So when I go to select an answer for something, uh, I'm going to check the number buttons and see if I can uh, get a number button to check against the answer. So let me grab some uh, buttons. So I'm going to create this button right here. And I'm going to uh, give it a name. Um, I'm going to call this uh, button one. And I'm going to make the font quite large. So it fills up the button, and button one is going to be a one. So I'm going to do that, and I'll have um, nine of these. Okay, the next part is I've designed nine buttons. So you can see button one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I went to each button, and for the tag, I tagged each one manually. So button one has a one in it, button two has a text two. But you'll notice it's already tagged with a 2, and 3 is a 3, and so on. And then what I want to do is, if I take a look at my code, just like I did with the um, click array, I want to create a um, button array. And so you could pretty well copy uh, click array. It's going to be very, very similar, uh, but we won't copy it. 
um, let me just show you what it's going to be. So I'm going to make a subroutine called button click. And so if button has been clicked, um, I'm going to get it to handle and then I list them all here in a list and I call it button one, uh, button one and so forth. And it's pretty easy to type in manually because as you start typing, if I type BTN, you'll see if I wanted to put BTN8, there it is. I'll just go BTN8.click and so forth. So it won't take too long to write the nine buttons. Once I have the nine buttons, what do I want to do? Well, what I'm going to do is uh, in the previous one, let's see if I can get them both on the screen at the same time. You'll see in the previous one, I declare text as a text box. Here I can declare BTN as a button. Uh, I'm going to then say text is uh, the C type of sender of the text box. So BTN is going to be the C type of a sender of the button. And then I'm going to say, uh, I want to know the value of the button's tag. So maybe I'll make a variable. Dim, I'll call it uh, display um, as an integer and it's going to equal the uh, button's uh, value and then my Sudoku array selected cell at the selected cell, the text, uh, let's put in the display uh, which is a number. And I'll just run this so you can see what it looks like um, and then we're going to have to do a couple more things. So if I was to select right here um, and put a 2, uh, you'll notice it displays a 2. If I click here and just put a uh, 3, it would put a 3 in here. And uh, we've still got some work to do. We want to compare this value with what's in the row and what's in the column and what's in the queue. And so what I would do next is I actually, when I select a cell, I'm not going to highlight the row, column, and cube. Rather, that's not going to come when I just click the cell. Rather, it's going to come when I click the button. So I'm going to move that now um, to just right here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to highlight just the cell that was selected um, by changing the color of that. And so what I'm going to say is uh, my Sudoku array at the selected cell uh, the um, oops the background color is going to equal color dot um, I think it's steel light steel blue I think I was using I can't remember So the selected cell is going to be steel blue. And so now, when I just click a cell, uh, let's see what my error was. Um, it's just going to display Oh, did I delete my column? Oops. Ah, I'll fix that in another video. I guess when I cut and paste, I must have um, deleted the column. Uh, I can do that easy enough. But you'll see uh, when I click on it, it's just going to select a single cell. But if I go and put a number in it, it then will highlight it all.